Hi, it's Priam here for Niche. Very important news. We've hit 10,000 subscribers. So thank you so much to every single one of you guys that have subscribed, have taken the time to comment, have shared my content. I'm so grateful and I'm so grateful for everybody who has given me uh, the positive feedback for me to continue doing these videos. I know they're a bit dry. I know that, you know, we're talking about mortgages and now mortgages are in the news, but you know, we were doing mortgages a long time ago. So really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Great piece of news here also around the uh, interest rate peaking and expectations around interest rates. And we've got now another think tank saying that they believe that interest rates are going to peak and they're going to peak sooner and they're going to peak at a lower rate. So let's talk about it. Hi, it's Prime from Niche here. Hope you're well. Right, so we've got a think tank, Capital Economics, who have now lowered their forecast on the Bank of England base rate peaking from 5% to 4.5%. They basically think at the end of quarter one, 2023, interest rates are going to peak at 45 now and not 5 So that's actually quite a big move right and this actually goes in line with what i'm seeing in the market from the lender side of things so we've actually seen a number of lenders pretty much all of them price themselves down now granted those pricing reductions are not as aggressive as the way they were going up so um to give you an idea uh, when i was doing mortgages probably a couple of weeks ago say three weeks ago um i couldn't get anyone that will give you a mortgage below 5% with 40% deposit. So below 5% with 40% deposit. It was coming in at 5.3, 5.4. Now we've got a number of lenders who will give you that at 5%, under 5%. Okay, so that gives you an idea of where things have moved. So they've moved about half a basis points already and lenders are pre-pricing every day. Now, in fact, I just quoted, um, uh, I just quoted a client and their rate with 15% deposit was around the 5% mark, right? So this gives you an idea. Things have moved quite dramatically, uh, especially in the residential, what I call the vanilla, the straightforward residential market. We've seen reductions. Now, we're going to see more reductions because of these type of forecasting and um, lenders are, are repricing. However, um, some of the major lenders, believe it or not, are still off the pace. There are some lenders that are still off the pace. The, the mainstream, you know, the ones that have got millions of customers, they're still off the pace. They're still above the five, five and a bit percent rate with, with 20 percent deposit, for example. So it's vital you speak to an independent mortgage broker. If not us, you know, there are lots of great ones out there because this, this is the exact time you need advice. This is the time you need independent advice because you can go, I can quote a lender, honestly, and I've done so. I can quote a lender today. By the time the clients gather their documentation, get everything sorted out, say it takes it three days if they're really good, right? By that time, that lender is no longer the best. That lender could be on the second page now because other lenders have repriced. And it's not just about the pricing, remember. It's about the criteria. It's about the affordability. Will they take your bonus? Will they take your commission? Will they take um, uh, second jobs? Will they take your pension into contribution? All of those things have to be worked out before a recommendation is made. We as brokers have to justify our recommendations. So for example, it's not just about the rate, we have to give you a reason why we've discounted the five lenders that are above you that may have better rates. But why did we recommend the sixth lender instead of the first lender? And those are the things that are, that are important. Now, let me give you a couple of tips for this volatile market. We think interest rates are gonna stabilize, say, uh, next year. So they do think there's gonna be a couple of more interest rate rises. Okay, but instead of 5% peak, they think it's going to be around 4.5%. Now, that's the Bank of England base rate. So that doesn't mean that mortgage rates are going to be like that. Remember, Bank of England base rates are 3% right now, and mortgage rates are around about the 5, you know, 5, 5.5%, okay, depending on the level of deposit you've got. So that gives you an idea, all right? So 
if they think it's going to peak up at four and a half, okay, peak off at four and a half, you've got to think where's the rates are going to be then, you know, maybe one and a half to two percent higher. So take that into account. Now, taking that into account, when you look at the five year fixed, and honestly, I was just I was having a conversation with one of one of my friends who's just going for a mortgage. And it's a really difficult decision to make right now. Because what do you do? And this could be done for remortgages and mortgages. What do you do? You've got an options right now. You think in the horizon rates may stabilize and come down. When you look at the products, actually, historically, you used to get two year was always cheaper than a five year. Right now, two years, pretty much more expensive than a five year. So that tells us the lenders think that the mortgage rates or the Bank of England base rates and mortgage rates are going to reduce over the longer term or they will stabilize they will be similar in the next five years in fact i've seen a couple of 10-year fixes come up sub five okay so their thinking is interest rates are going to stay stable or not climb as drastically as even what we thought a month ago right right now the way they're pricing it but they think two years is expensive they think in the next two years interest rates are going to be high so what do we do well there's not many three-year fixes out there so if there is a lender with three-year fix look at that option it really comes down to circumstances and let me make you both sets of arguments for a two-year and five-year so this couple i was talking to they've got two kids they go to nursery they both work they're both hitting a big mortgage they're both hitting a you know relatively high loan to value option one to say look at the moment things are all up in the air we didn't know where we, where, where we were three weeks ago let alone now hit a five year yes you might be paying more over the five years because rates might come down however you've got the stability if the world changes you've got the stability of knowing what you're doing in the next five years concentrate on the next five years reducing your mortgage so when we come out of it in five years time we can be more adventurous and look at tracker rates or look at a two-year option and play it by ear okay um, so that's option one you've got a lot of cost you've, you're just about to hit a mortgage you're just about to purchase the property it will need work doing to it you know what the cost of the building works and everything has gone up at the moment so play it safe go five years you know look after your family and we'll come back and do it again so that's option one and that's probably the the one that we normally go in with but option two and this is why it's so difficult and everybody has to make their own decision is option two is you can say well, yes, you've got these two kids. However, at the moment, you're spending X amount on your nursery cost, which is taken into account for affordability purposes, which is absolutely ridiculous. Why would you? And this is why gripe with lenders not understanding real, real world challenges, right? Nursery fees go away. Three years, four years maximum. That's it. They're gone. Why are you taking it into account for the next 25 years? right or 30 years or whatever the term is there's got to be come on if you're going to take 50 percent of the bonus okay and say well okay well it's not guaranteed and stuff why don't you only take 25 percent or 50 percent of the cost it's common sense it's ridiculous they're trying to have it both way right so and and you know so this couple they've got nursery fees not nursery fees their kids are going to grow up in the next year year and a bit they don't have nursery fees anymore so they could do a two-year fixed and all of a sudden they wouldn't have all the costs because all the cost of buying the property and putting a new boiler in things like that they're gone in the, in the first two years plus they don't have almost another mortgage to pay because they're not putting as nursery fees in there so all of a sudden they've got money in two years time and they can be more adventurous because you know if even rates go up they've got all this cash at the moment which is tied up so they can be a little bit more flexible and play it and go right in two years time rates may reduce so i'm gonna i'm gonna play that game so and then what also we don't know is and this is where a, a mortgage broker would come into play is 
do you have any other money coming to you? Have you got inheritance coming to you? Have you got money coming to you? Have you got bonds maturing? Is there anything else? Is there a reduction in cost? All of those things have to be taken into account because that two year and five year choice is very difficult. For them, because of the high loan to value, because of the two kids, because of the uncertainty, I don't recommend a tracker. However, you have got some people, for example, people that are on remortgages. Okay, they've got mortgages, they've got their remortgages coming up. At the moment, tracker rates are not a bad option, right? Yes, and then it's just a matter of how many interest rate rises do you have to see on that tracker rate for it to go high enough more than a two-year fixed, for example. And if you've got a tracker rate with no early repayment charges, you could be on your way. As soon as things get a bit too you know, wobbly, you could get out. You can fix with your same mortgage lender or a different mortgage lender. So tracker rate, if you've got a low loan to value, not a huge amount on your affordability. You're not stacked up too much. The loan is not huge. You've got a good steady income. Could be an option, okay? And they were not two years ago, a year ago, because you were getting mortgage rates at 1%. Five-year fix. I was doing five-year fix sub 1%, okay? The same length clients come to me right now, you're looking at five. So think about that. Now, let me give you a tip about whether you're purchasing or remortgaging, and this is more grief for the mortgage broker, but it's good for you. Let's say you get your mortgage. Let's say you fix in for five years, right? That mortgage, say if you're purchasing, the purchase takes a couple of months, say it could take two months to three months for you to complete, depending on the chain. What you should be doing is locking in at that five year, you got your mortgage offer on that five year fix or that two year fix, but keep an eye on the rates. Because in two months' time, if rates do reduce from that lender, and remember, three weeks ago, rates were half a basis point higher, and now they're lower. So you could go back to the same mortgage broker and say, do you know what, I've noticed such and such lender, rates have actually come down. Or the mortgage broker can do that for you, depending on uh, how proactive they are. And you say, okay, I want to swap my 5% to the new rate of, I don't know, 4.89 now. Can you do that for me? So that's important and that comes as part of the advice process as well for the broker. Really, you know, looking at how cases are treated post offer is important now. That wasn't an issue before, but it is important now. Does the lender do a new credit search? Will they just do the swap? How long does it take for them to do the swap? How, how quickly can they turn that around? Um, uh, what's the what's the do you have to still supply them more documentation some lenders would want up to date pay slips some bank statements um, like I said credit searches how long is that offer valued for that's a really important point you know when you get your mortgage quote how long is the mortgage offer valued for is it six months is it three months and it's very very important so you can protect yourself by fixing now and having the luxury, and even if you, you know, most mortgage offers for purchases are six months valid. So you can have the luxury of fixing in today, but having the hindsight of the next six months to think about it. And that's really, really important in this climate. It wouldn't have been a conversation six months ago, but it's certainly a conversation now to have. So have that with your mortgage broker, have that with your mortgage lender. Remember, the difference between a mortgage lender is they're only going to they're only going to advise on that lender, especially initially, okay? Um, with an independent mortgage broker, like I said, you know, we could quote a client, this lender, by the time the documents come in, that lender's way down. They might have changed their affordability. They might have changed their uh, the rates. They might have a high fee, low fee. You know, all of those things get taken into account. Anyway, guys, it is a really difficult choice to make right now on what to do about products, okay? No one really knows. Um, I would, you know, I put myself in their position, and it's a very difficult decision to make. And as much as a as a mortgage broker can give you advice around the good and bad points, it's very much a discussion between if it's a couple between the couple, and how risky you think you want to be. Listen, guys, a month ago nobody knew what was going on. You know, and I and I argue that most people still don't know what's going on. Don't just take comfort because lenders are pricing at a five year, cheaper than two year. Lenders didn't know what they were doing. There was the same lenders that were doing one and a half percent six months ago. So, you know, nobody really knows. You know, these forecasting people. How many forecasters have we had? We get a forecast a week. So, 
you know, it's, it's promising that they don't think it's going to be, you know, hell. We were getting full cost of 6%, 7%. So uh, that's useful. Um, the buy to let market's a different ball game. They could do what they want on the rate side of things until they deal with the stress testing on the rental calculation. It's just going to bomb. Uh, one of my suggestions is for them, they have to remove stress testing for like for like remortgages. So if you're going from one lender to another lender to get a better rate, you should remove those stress testing uh, barriers for buy to lets. Otherwise, the whole market's going to be in real serious trouble, especially in London. Uh, London is, is in real big trouble uh, because the rental calculation don't stack up. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.